Welcome to Ignite Intimacy, a podcast exploring intimacy, romantic relationships, sexuality, and everything that relates to these hot topics. We're going in. Are you ready? This is your host, Laura Aisha. Let's do this. Ignite Intimacy community, I have a very special message for you. We are doing a giveaway. And we're doing this with Desirables, who we featured on the podcast in December. So they're giving away a very special packet that has their female explorer and some massage stones. So make sure you hop over to our Instagram page at Ignite Intimacy to learn more. See you on the other side of Valentine's. Hello, Ignite Intimacy community. This is Miss Laura Aisha, and we have got a very juicy and powerful episode here for you today. We have Jamie Thompson on the line, who is an erotic and intimate communication expert, and she also works with conscious entrepreneurs and visionary couples. What is going on, Jamie? I'm doing really well. How are you, Laura? Great. Doing great. Great. Happy New Year. We're off to a brand new start, 2018. I'm feeling the energy, feeling the vibes. Yes. Yep. (laughs) Just a couple weeks in and it's already rolling. Oh yeah, totally. So you're based in Denver, Colorado, right? Yes. Cool. Yeah, my big sis lives out there. Great. And so... It's great to connect with you. I think that, did Eva Clay introduce us? Yes, Eva Clay did introduce us. Great. Okay, cool. So yeah. so Eva was featured on episode 46, which is a powerful conversation. I definitely recommend going and checking that out. And we are going to dive into some completely uh, different topics, but we're also going to dive into some topics that relate to that episode. And we're going to expand on some of the things that we talked about with Eva with regards to some of the sort of like, you know, the the oxytocin and the serotonin and the, you know, the dopamine levels, all of those chemical reactions that happen in the body when you're relating with someone in an intimate way. So it's really exciting to have you here because, I'm just fascinated by the work that you do with couples and specifically visionary couples and entrepreneur couples because I'm I'm single right now, but I've always had a vision of having a partner where we're doing business together. Uh, uh So it's really interesting. I'm wondering, like, how did you even get into this work? Well, it's it's a it's a very interesting path. Specifically, we'll start at the very beginning. Like some of us, I've been fascinated with sex since I was about six years old when I figured out how to, how to have an orgasm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was the beginning. But in my family, there, there was a lot of shame and religious programming surrounding sexuality. So it, it became a source of, of secrecy and curiosity for me. And then at the age of 17, I had a life coach who completely shifted the course of my life. And I decided that that's exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. And naturally, the the subject of sexuality actually came up as that will probably be what I'm going to work with. So the path was kind of laid out really clearly. And then I ended up taking life coaching certification, studied hypnotherapy, picked the, the niche of working with people in sexuality, attraction, and dating, I became a professional wing woman and dating coach in San Diego for a few years. Wow. And, and then meanwhile, I spent two years coaching the ILP, which is Landmark Education's top leadership program. So that was oh, really awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to do the ILP oh, program oh, this year. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I coached four ILP programs. Oh, wow. You yeah. go, girl. That's, that's, I mean, <laughs> like, I now it's like that gives me an even bigger 
vision of like what you're made of. Because <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> that work is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, that was that was kind of the beginning. I was I was doing that, Laura, when I was about let's see, how old was I? I was twenty two. I was oh twenty one and twenty two. So I was just a little firecracker. I mean, I came out that way. That's <laughs> and, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, and then as I was working with people, I and and you know doing my own personal study. I real what started to happen is the people I was coaching and dating started getting into relationships. And then they were having some challenges there, some of the same challenges they were having and coming up. So I started shifting my focus into supporting people in relationships and in that world. And then meanwhile, I entered into a very interesting personal development incubator, as I call it, with someone, an amazing teacher named Dr. Carl Wolf. And what he does is create a a quantum field space where we can study and embody psychology and neuroscience. And so for about eight years, I eventually, I participated, eventually helped facilitate him in this group environment where we practiced these, these concepts and these theories in real time and embodied through feedback. So it was a really intense environment. If you think landmark is intense, this is, this is definitely also intense. You know, we did a lot of somatic movement reprogramming and as well as feedback and and then just development and accessing, dropping into this quantum field state. And this was really helpful for my development just in honing intuition and the ability to have personal clarity in my own stuff to really see what's going on in Mm. people. And it was super intense. I feel like in some ways I earned my wings in this in this program. And now my focus is with couples and sex and intimacy, like you mentioned. And specifically, my favorite word is eroticism. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the program that you were mentioning? So I did several programs. It was with, studied with Dr. Carl Wolf. Okay. Mm -hmm. He, his whole program is called Authentic University. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Authentic University. I'll have to check that out. Sounds mm, really yeah. interesting. So you were living on the West Coast then? Yes, I was. I was in California during this whole time, and then just recently moved to Denver. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, great. It's interesting because, like, I've been single most of my adult life. I've shared this a lot on the podcast. I've had you know lovers and friends and and a couple of boyfriends here and there, but I generally have not had any what I would call like truly conscious adult long-term relationships yet. And there are many different reasons for that. But I, I know that in my mind, you know, I've had this idea about the type of relationship that I want and I will see these like, you know, power couples or, you know, couples who are also in business together and just like, rocking out in the world. And, you know, I create this fantasy around it. Like, Mm. look at them. They're so, you know, like they're in love, but like they're doing business together and like, it must be amazing. And I've always had an idea that that is what I I want, you know, because I I had a relationship with a man in my late 20s that was really painful for me in different ways. And one of those ways is that he had a thriving career where he traveled around the world pretty consistently and that didn't include me. And from that relationship, I was like, never again. (laughs) Like I will not be in a relationship with a man who is rocking and rolling and traveling the world and where I'm not included in that. So in my mind, you know, the way that I created the, the potential scenario is that, well, we're in business together and our business takes us around the world, you know, our work, Mm. our work and our passion and our adventure. You know, I'd love to just dive into this topic of being in romantic relationship and being entrepreneurs, whether you're working on the same projects and businesses together, or you both have your own projects that you're working on and businesses. And like, what, you know, what, what type of scenarios does that create relationally, sexually, you know, with, uh, with eroticism. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. 
I love that question, Laura. It's, it's interesting with, you know, this, this idea and, and sort of the fantasy of being a power couple. Now I, I love the term power couple, but for me, it's important to define it. And it's about, for me, it's about being separately in your power together. And that's a power couple. Mm. So it's like finding something where each, each person is, has a mission in life, has a, has a bigger vision that they are going after. Doesn't necessarily mean entrepreneur, although many times it is entrepreneurs, you know, but it can also just be people who are really up to something in life. And I, those are the people I really love to work with because when you're up to something big in life, your relationship working, it can be a symptom of that. Your whole energy isn't focused into the relationship because that's where a lot of people enter into challenges. Also, like what you mentioned, where it sounds like, and I may be inaccurate in this, please let me know, but it sounds like your partner had a vision that he was actively focused working on. And at that time in your life, maybe you didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And that's where there can be a collapse into the relationship where one person collapse into the relationship and the relationship becomes stronger than their life vision. And the other person then is pursuing their life vision and the relationship is secondary to that and it, and it can create an imbalance. So it's, it's, it is interesting to create a relationship where both people have a focus on something something bigger than themselves. And they're actively putting some creative energy into that and then bringing creative energy back out of it and funneling that into the relationship. And it becomes a positive feedback cycle with it. Mm, Yeah, that's very interesting. And you're right. I mean, at, at that time in my life, I had a vision, but I... I was much younger than this person and I was still sort of, you know, it was a kind of a tumultuous time in my life. And I was still building a lot of just confidence within myself and building my own self-esteem and trying to figure out what my path, you know, what the path to what I was trying to accomplish was. And so, yeah, so there was definitely some collapse there. And you also said something, you know, being in business together, I just want to speak to that for a moment because it it could be that and you know for for people out there listening it it doesn't have to be being in business together you know it, it can be and that that in itself creates a whole nother challenge you know of like making time for the for the relationship and for really cultivating the eroticism and the intimacy and not just making your entire relationship about business. Mm -hmm. So in my experience, adding, adding in the being in business together adds a different layer of challenge, not impossible. And those are some of the people that have to get really clear about setting up boundaries for Mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Or you could literally be talking about business all day and all night um, (laughs) from the bathroom to the bedroom to the kitchen to the car, you know. And okay, so so let's talk about about this for all of our, you know, people who are listening, who are in relationships, for anyone who can relate to this experience of of, you know, two couples or two, you know, individuals in a relationship who are you know, activating on different levels, whether they're focused on the same thing or they, they've got different projects in mind. Let's dive into like some of the challenges that couples tend to face. Absolutely. I, you know, I think one of the, one of the biggest challenges for, you know, people that are really up to something in life that, that I've seen is, is not having time for their erotic life together. Mm. And I would shift that as as a language shift to not making time because, you know, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And ultimately the first, the first thing it comes down to is what is the priority? And there's something that I like to call relationship ROI. And this appeals to, to business folks in a way, because, you know, we're, we're, we're always looking at, at, receive getting an ROI back in our mm-hmm. relationship in, in our ventures in, in in the business world. And we can also receive a relationship ROI back, but we have to invest in the relationship. And how it works is 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 like investing in a really good stock. 
you know, you put a little money in and it grows, you know, you put a little energy into your relationship and it grows and then it pays you back exponentially. And when there's a a time of challenge, you can actually make a withdraw from your relationship bank account and it won't be on empty because there's plenty to spare. So it's mm. really, I like to make this correlation of, of relationships and money and, and treating our relationship as a bank account instead of as the place that we come to with all the, you know, all of our spare change at the end of the day, yeah. right? Like actually investing in the relationship. And we can do this through something I call sacred scheduling. And many times, you you know, I mean, if you look at what's important to you, you will find it in your schedule and in your bank account. There's where you will see what's really important. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Right? That's right. right. So if you, if you're putting your scheduling, your relationship into your schedule where all of your other important meetings are, and I call it sacred scheduling or sexy scheduling, and you actually schedule a, a period of time to really drop in with your partner and create a date night or create an intimacy, an intimacy night and actually put it in the calendar. That's, that's one of the biggest and and first things that, that I suggest when, when people are saying, you know, well, we, we don't have a lot of time Mm. and because the time thing really becomes an excuse and then people aren't actually receiving the value that they can and many times want to be receiving from their relationships. So they think the relationship isn't working, but they're Mm -hmm. actually just not putting energy into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting one. And I noticed this in my own language, right. In life, it's like, oh, I didn't have time. And then I'm like, oh no, I just didn't make time for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of a, a, a mistruth that I picked up somewhere along the way is that you have to work hard to make something happen, to make something of your life, to make a lot mm-hmm. of money, to have success. And that became me working every spare minute that I had. Mm-hmm. And whether it was working on you know, a business or a project or just doing some random task to further organize my space or my life or my you know, files on my computer, whatever it might be. And what I've realized is that by creating space and for now, for me to just have space for myself, you know, to nurture my own relationship with me, to allow my nervous system to relax, it's creating like a completely new life experience. So I can, I can imagine what that looks like in relationship. Yes. I I, I love that you made the correlation to making space for yourself because that's also equally as important as making space for the relationship. (laughs) So I'm glad you brought that up because it's like, we absolutely have to do that. And that's something that, you know, I, I relate with you in that for me, it it's, I tend to be, you know, get into sort of a, a black hole of work and it's been really amazing to set timers on my phone. And when the timer goes off, I do something for myself. And I do this four or five times a day, especially if I'm having an an intensive work day with a lot of computer work or writing or, you know, online admin stuff, I'll, I'll do, I'll set the timer and I'll just get up and dance to a song or I'll drop into five minutes of meditation, or I will, you know, make sure that I drink a bunch of water or do some stretching or, you know, just kind of hang out and stare at my plants for a minute, you know, I mean, just do something. (laughs) do something to get out of that, that kind of work hole. And, and I found that it, it, it makes me far more productive. And one of the reasons for this is it's when we take small breaks to celebrate, it actually releases dopamine, you know, getting into a little bit of that neuroscience, Mm -hmm. it actually releases it's, you know, if, if we set things up where it's like three months of work and then I get a celebration, if I succeed, we're really holding off a dopamine release for a very long time. And, and it can become into that addictive cycle where we only celebrate when there's some kind of external success. Whereas if we set our alarm, I mean, I set my alarm because that's how I pay attention to it. If we set it and it goes off and that's my reminder to do something 
that, that brings a bit of celebration into my life, you know, and, and I get to dance around and, and experience a little, a little of a little joy and a little of that re- reward chemical more frequently than I'm generally just in a more positive, happy, elevated state. And I'm not so hell bent on success or else mm. for my happiness. Mm. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like you start to reevaluate the equation and actually taking that time and taking that space and, and moving or, or resting or meditating or doing some stretching, you know, whatever, or dancing or cooking or, you know, whatever the case may be, stepping outside, smelling the air. It's like you start to realize that actually that becomes the access to the life that you, you're dreaming of, to creating a more ROI friendly experience in the world. Yes, right. You're you're creating it now. Mm-hmm. You're creating the experience that you want to have now. And then now paralleling and and circling back to relationship with this, what we can do the same thing in relationship where it's like take moments each each person, you know, each member of the couple, you know, we can take moments to really celebrate to celebrate the way that we want to experience our partner whether or not it's happening. Mm-hmm. And that's the key is like, if, if we're looking to what has happened in the past or the way it currently seems, we're going to continue creating that. Mm-hmm. And this is not just some kind of spiritual hippy dippy mumbo jumbo. This is actually science of how quantum field theory works, where we, we actually begin because we are an electromagnetic field and we begin to, as we celebrate with, with gratitude and we look and we're like, wow, this is so amazing. Even, even take out our journal and write down like, wow, it was so amazing today. My husband, he, he looked at me with that certain look in his eye and, and he touched my hair and just the way I like, and, and actually completely going into the experience in past tense, as if it's something that has already happened then we start walking around in the world with an adjusted electromagnetic field. Mm. A field actually shifts to be in alignment with that which we are feeling and thinking. Wow. It's very powerful. And we can do this in relationship where, where we actually start to create a space for our partner to start to show up differently. Mm-hmm. Through doing this, I, I had a, a really interesting, just a little story with a, a client where she felt like her partner wasn't offering the kind of love that she wanted. And we uncovered some specific magic words that she wanted to be hearing. Like these are the words that were just like, yes, to her system. And she started saying them to herself in the mirror exactly the way she wanted to hear them several times a day. Mm. And she was really disciplined about this because at first this was, this was discipline that carried it through. At first it was like, okay, I'm saying it. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. I feel good for like maybe a minute or I don't even really get it, you know, because I wish he would say it. So she carried it through with discipline for about a week. And then she says to me, and I love this. She said, my cells reorganized and it started to come through me and bingo because she became happy with herself again in a different way Mm. and created the space for that to then show up in him. And, you know, some might say coincidentally, I think not. He started giving her desire and attention in the way that she wanted and started commenting on her energy shift. Mm. Wow. Right. I call that a relationship flow state, right? Where we enter a state of flow in ourself and it pulls, it pulls the relationship. It shifts the field of our, the shared field of our relationship into a a different space that, that is a higher vibration for us. That's amazing. I mean, it just, it reminds me of some of the experiences I've had where I've been able to shift my internal state that's actually allowed the external sh- state to shift. Completely. And I didn't have to say anything to anyone or, you know, like draw a line in the sand or anything like that. It was just like, right. okay, getting right inside myself 
it has an impact on, you know, exactly what's happening around me and how other people are perceiving me or reacting towards me or, you know, whether they're coming closer or whether they're moving further away. Yes. Right. And, and so getting right within yourself, I love that. I mean, maybe we can dive into that a little more. I'm curious also for you, like, so this, you know, my, my client was looking in the mirror and, and saying something to herself. I've, I've done, you know, I do it by stopping and going into a silent meditative space in my body. I'm curious if there's any, you know, like what you do for that. Oh, that's a great question. I think it's a combination of things. It's a lot Uh of self-talk. Over the last 10 years, I have worked diligently on shifting my internal dialogue with myself. Mm -hmm. And so the internal dialogue used to sound like, God damn it, Laura, you know, there you go again. When are you ever going to learn? You know, like just stop. You know, it was very hard. It was very judgmental and mean. Like when I realized how mean I was to myself, Mm -hmm. it was shocking. And I just, I decided like, okay, this needs to change. So the awareness was the first place that I started just being aware of it and saying, oh, okay, that's the old pattern. And then replacing it with new language and So some of that new language is just like, I love you, you know, like, I love you. You're here. We're Mm -hmm. here. You know, another one that I've started to say. So my mantra last year and probably for the last few years, I do uh, just a body, you know, self-massage in the morning before I get out of bed. And part of that is just like hugging myself on both sides and saying like, we are love we are loved. Like Mm -hmm. my entire being is the we, right? And so what came to me through the end of 2017 into 2018 is the new mantra is, we are here, we belong. Mm -hmm. And so part of the challenge that I've had in my life is feeling separate from or excluded from, not a part of. So it's this reprogramming my brain to know that actually we are, we do belong and we are a part of where there's no separation. Amazing. Mm, Thank you so much for sharing that. I really, I felt that like, and, and I feel like your listeners, it's like, they might feel this as well. I, I feel you experiencing that as you're talking about it. And it, it's, it's like you've made the shift and are making the shift as a present tense experience into having that be your experience. And it's not just something that you're saying to yourself from the same judgmental place, which I think is the key with this, mm. is it's like actually shifting the structure that created that belief in the first place not That's just right. shifting the the belief you're actually going into the very structure of it you know with going into your body and 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 touching you know touching yourself and and feeling that love like it's a body phenomenon yeah. not just a head phenomenon right it's like is the body shifting when i say this to myself and if it's not then we're not making the shift. We're not getting the root. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not making the shift at the deepest level unless it's like a full body experience. And I felt you having a full body experience. So it's, I'm just glad we got to have that here because that experience is so powerful. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it is like, I do, I feel it in my body and it's like the true me right? Like underneath all the stuff that I've picked up along the way of my life, that's where that voice comes from. Like that's where the, it's like the part of me that knows the truth about life and about me and about my spirit and energy and why I'm here. Yes. It's like the distinction between essence and personality. Mm -hmm. And one of the, one of the, the, the pieces with, you know, making, making a, a shift like this in my experience as well is, is experiencing it 
in in the essence and experiencing it in the in our energetic field not just as like a mental phenomenon that we're almost beating ourselves up with <laughs> my experience is that i've i've almost beat myself up with positive thinking before mm. and and gone into like you know like i i love myself i love myself okay yes i'm loving myself but <laughs> but <laughs> It's, but I'm feeling like shit about it. <laughs> right, right. But it's like, oh, I'm not loving myself enough. Shit, I'm not doing it. You know, and going into, going into this going into this judgment space about it and just laughing at our humanity right now. It's so funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like I'm know, still bad and wrong. Damn it. Right, right. <laughs> and and it's and it's fun and it's a stage. And then it's like just like dropping in and, and asking ourselves, I love the frame of how easy can it be? Mm. How easy can it be to love myself? How mm. easy can it be to flow with with joy through my day? Mm. How easy can it be to to feel connected and passionate with my partner? Yes, yes. And when you shift the dialogue to that, it's like magic happens. I had a, an experience in just this last fall where I sat in ceremony with some folks and I just got like, it's so easy. Like life is so simple and easy and like it can be like this fun, like this much fun, you know? <laughs> and and I was just like, wow, like I really got from that experience, one, how much suffering I have caused myself and p the people around me because of the old stories that I get locked in from time to time. And then two, like, just, wow, like, it can really be this easy. Yes. Yeah. So shifting the dialogue, I'm just really, that's been coming through a lot too. Let's just shift the dialogue around this. And be mindful of the words that we're using. Like, I don't have time. What's the, like, flip the script on that. Like, let's mm -hmm. create time. And I, I've talked about this on the podcast before. My cousin and his wife, they have, they're, they're a young family. They have four children. They, from literally, like, when their first son was a month old, they were doing date night on Friday night. Even if they went out for an hour together date night, Friday night. And then they would insert small trips together, just the two of them, no kids. You know, now they have the, you know, they've had like grandparents and, and support with childcare. I know that can be a challenge for couples, but I mean, it's like come hell or high water, unless someone is like really sick, they're going on date night. And I've got to say that that from the outside looking in, I would assume that that has played a major role in keeping like the love alive, the sexual desire and eroticism in their relationship alive, and then also helping them be better parents and better partners. Absolutely. And I, I love that. I love that example. And, you know, for another one of these, you know, to, to move on to uh, another challenge that, that I see happen with, with couples is the the question of not knowing what they desire. Mm. So sometimes what what couples, you know, it's not I don't have time, but it's like what would we do on a date night? <laughs> I don't <Yeah>. even know <laughs> like why why would we do that? You know, it it we we don't cuz cuz couples can get out of, you know, it's easy to get out of the when the oxytocin bond, you know, this this cuddle chemical that makes us want to stay with the same person and is, you know, responsible for being the human glue that, you know, feels good to be in relationship. Sometimes when you're in consistent connection with the same person for a really long time, you know, the oxytocin can build up and it can, it can almost kind of have an impact where it, it reduces the impact of some of the other happy chemicals like serotonin and dopamine. Mm. So it, it can become a little bit like, can create a little bit of a fog if, of like, I don't really know, like, what would we do? Or, you know, we're, we're kind of always just talking about our to-do list. And I, it, like the idea of bringing up something exciting or passionate within their relationship has, they've just gotten out of the habit of it because they're mm. kind of in this oxytocin blanket of comfort. 
So what can be really helpful in that instance when people say, I don't know what I desire is try anything. Just try doing something that is a side of a, of a dinner, a dinner date where you sit across from each other and continue talking about your to-do list. I don't recommend that. Mm -hmm. It's actually try doing something different. Mm -hmm. Try doing something physical that will release some endorphins. You know, it, it's so funny. I've, 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 I've seen, I have this one couple who started working out together. Mm -hmm. They started working out together because they were both already working out. That's great for people who have a, you know, a, a, a high value on, on time efficiency. You're already working out. And they started working out together and then they started flirting with each other while they were working out. And mm -hmm. it just accessed this whole new, it, it was almost like this playful role play while they were working out, which then got them out of their sort of oxytocin blanket fog. That was still there, of course. It's not going anywhere. But they they added in some more some more passion and some new aliveness into their relationship. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you know, I'm just thinking like what came to me was like do a yoga class together, go rock climbing together, go you know like like thinking outside of the box from the the general like okay let's just go to a restaurant and sit yes. across from each other something that my cousin and his wife do is they'll they'll do date night and they'll start with like you know a drink and appetizers at one spot and then they'll go to another spot for dinner and then they may have you know dessert and cocktails somewhere else mm -hmm. so they kind of like move around and it yeah. makes it a little bit more social and fun and exciting even like a scavenger hunt. Like what would it yes. be like to like, you know, create a little scavenger hunt for your mate when they come home, leave a note on the door and, and guide them around to, you know, to some different things and, and make it exciting and make it pleasurable. Yes. A sentence stem I love for getting creative in this realm is I wonder what it would be like to and then you mm. just kind of dream because when you do that, you're accessing a different part of your brain. You're actually dropping into creativity and flow of curiosity is, is, a, is a very high state of mental consciousness. So, you know, when, when, we, when we actually look into, like what you said, getting outside of the box, I wonder what it would be like to just you know, slow dance in our living room together, naked, mm, you know, I mean, mm. like it, do, you know, it's like, we can actually drop into some of these interesting date ideas and, and fun. I love the idea of a scavenger hunt. I mean, just applying a little bit of creativity into that. And again, this comes back to relationship ROI, because when you do that, you receive back 10 times what you put into it. Mm. It becomes a source of creativity, passion, and aliveness, support, inspiration, all these things that can then go help you in your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so this is interesting, balancing that, that overload of oxytocin with some other chemicals, right? Like simulating other chemicals. Yes, it is interesting. And as you're, you know, because oxytocin is, is what part of, it's partly responsible for what pulls people together. But once, you know, you're together for a long time, then you don't, it, it's like that can keep flowing. And if now, if there's, this is, this is the one caveat to this. If these, th what we're talking about so far is for people who have a lot of love, they're, they're just lacking passion and novelty. Mm. So if there's fighting, if there now what can happen is, you know, this goes on long enough without the passion and novelty, the oxytocin can actually start to dip in the relationship. If there's not enough connection at all, then that can start to dip. And that's where making sure that, you know, the love languages are being, are being met is mm -hmm. really important, you know, and, and making sure that the love and the connection is established as well. So oxytocin is really important. And there's just kind of a unique balance that each person in each couple has of how much they actually want and, and then how much they want to activate some of these other elements. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little, a little shot of 
you know, a, a little shot of shared adrenaline can be really interesting. You know, a, a couple who's kind of experiencing a bit of, of stagnation, it can be really interesting to, to do something that kind of pushes their boundaries. You know, if they have a really solid foundation of transparent communication and trust and, and moving really slowly, I've worked with people who have curiosity about, you know, exploring some of these more edgy realms of, of their, their eroticism together, or even bringing in a third or something like that, you know, and, and, and that kind of a thing, I'm thinking of one couple in particular that we went through a really slow process of bringing out the desire that they both had interest in bringing another woman into, into their relationship for fun sometime. And we went through a process that was really slow with talking about the desires, talking about the concerns and really playing with it. And then they, you know, they went out and they started flirting with people together and that was really fun for them. And then one time they met someone and they brought her home and they all had a wonderful time together. And that experience reignited something in their relationship that had been dead for years Mm. and it stuck around. That's the thing. The woman, you know, went, went along her way and the couple was completely reinvigorated for one mm, another. I love so that. So it was, it was so interesting. And, and I say this with, with a, a lot of caution because some people hear that and they're like, that's the solution, honey, let's go have a threesome. <laughs> and that's not exactly how it's done. You know, there's a lot of, of slowness and care to make sure something like that doesn't really blow up in your face. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, it did it like it brought a certain like shot of, of adrenaline for them that was like, whoa, like this is something we've never done. And this is so cool. And then they just fell in love with each other all over again. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, that's certainly not a scenario for everyone. However, when you do open up and talk about it and and air out all the concerns and lay it all out on the table, and then you can move forward from a place that feels like good from from both parties. That is certainly something that can ignite, reignite, the love and connection and and sexual connection with a couple completely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's about seeing, you know, and this is why I love the word eroticism because it's about so much more than sex. It's a, it's about seeing one another in a new light, Mm. you know, it's, it's, it's about seeing, you know, the, the passion of, of experiencing someone through a, a different lens than and and a different way than the normal box that you put them in, mm. and so it's 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 getting using your creativity to discover what these what some of these desires are, and and playing with them, and and going into even even that edgy realm sometimes yeah. you know, and for some people that's like maybe playing around with with blindfold and and you know being tied up or something you know by their partner, and it's some of these these different experiences can really help us see our partner as a sexual being again, and not just as, you know, the, the, the father of our kids and the, you know, the, the the one master, the the, task. Yeah. Completely. Well, and I, I'm also even just thinking about like how much education there is online around sex and sexuality and, and different, you know, sexual experiences and, and that couples can watch videos online together and like try different things and, you know, experiment and explore. And couples can also like do their own education, you know, on their own and then come back to the partnership, you know, by just like watching some videos and, and, you know, that kind of thing. Like, let's say one of the partners wants to learn how to give a G spot massage and, then they they come and sort of like surprise their partner with, you know, this like, okay, so I checked out some videos and I want to try this on you, you know? And I mean, I know I've had uh, lovers who I would just send a text and say, you know, like, I'm really intrigued by this. And they would go and like research it, (laughs) you know? And then then when the next time we'd be together, they, you know, they'd be like, okay, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm going to try it. And I, there was something that I loved about that. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I love that. And, and what you're, what you're speaking to is, is communicating about our desires 
And that actually, it, you know, leads me to another, another element that, or another issue that a challenge that, that couples seem to have is like, I have no idea how to communicate about what I want. You just demonstrated it very beautifully by saying, you know, sending a text, Hey, you know, I'm really curious about this or actually even bringing it up in person and establishing the kind of communication in your relationship that has space for talking about desires. And it's an interesting statement to say, I, you know, I don't know how to communicate Mm. this to my partner because I, it's one of those things that it's kind of like the having time versus making time where it's like, I haven't been willing to communicate this to my partner yet. Yeah. Is, is right. or, Or it's like, I don't like, I don't know how for me usually means I don't want to sound stupid. I don't want yes. to, you know, I don't want to fuck it up. I, I yep. may not do it right. You know, so that's what I don't know how to means yes. from when I say it, you know. And, yes. um So it's like, just say it. <laughs> just, you know, start having those conversations. And, and we all can be more courageous in our conversations and, and you know, how, how we're talking about things. And just like, we may not do it right, you know, in air quotes, but there is no doing it right. There's just like, there's more effective ways of communicating, which is a lot of the stuff that I've been learning from Landmark, uh, the Landmark work that I've been doing. And there are different ways to like present things that create more space and openness. And then there are other things, but like, if we don't try, (laughs) we don't know what works and what doesn't. Yes. And a couple of things that help with this is a couple of elements that, that help when bringing up something new like this are responsibility and vulnerability. So taking responsibility with the, you know, with what you just said, if it's, you know, I haven't been willing to bring this up because I was afraid that you would reject me, but I'm coming to know a new place of desire that, that I'm experiencing. And, and I'm a little nervous sharing this with you right now, but I'm wondering if you're open to hearing something new from me and then actually getting the, Oh yeah, go ahead. So your partner knows that you're now bringing something up that, that might be a little different. You know, you've kind of set them up for it and then, and then Mm. gotten their consent essentially to have this conversation right now. And then you can bring up whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been really curious and interested in, in getting into some of the more taboo areas of our relationship. You know, I'm, I'm curious about role playing. I'm, I'm more curious about dirty talk or, you know, I'm, I'm curious about some of these different elements of, of my, my sexuality. And I'm wondering if, if you'd be willing to, to give it a shot and go there with me. I love and, that. You know, just bringing it up as as you know, setting them up with with some vulnerability and responsibility for it's because it, sometimes these things can come out like, you know, you haven't been doing it right, and that's actually not going to be effective, right? Yeah, as when you're yeah. talking about effective communication, it's like the responsibility of you know what, like it's it's totally on me that I have never shared this with you, and it's coming up for me now. And I'm super curious about this yeah. and I'm really nervous, <laughs> mm. but, but letting, letting that all be there. And I've seen, and, and even having that conversation brings a deeper connection, brings a, a deeper connection and deeper vulnerability between you and your partner, even if they're like, you know, cause they have the right to say no. Of course. It, it, it's like shifting our intention from the place of, of my intention is for them to say yes from my intention is for this desire to be seen Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. shifting that to where it's like, Oh, success. It was seen. Yay. And that, you know, the partner might be like, well, you know, that's a, that's a little outside my comfort zone, but you know, let's, let's talk about what, what the overlap might be of, of, of your desire and my desire, Mm. or maybe, maybe, you know what, I'm totally willing to do that for you and share in your joy with that Mm -hmm. experience some compersion and share in your joy with that. And, Mm -hmm. and then, and then another, another follow-up question to this is like, I'm, you know, that we can say when we're bringing up some of these desires is I'm really curious about what desires you might have. Where's a jet for you right now? Like, how can I support you in exploring more of your desire? Yes. 
Mm. Well, this has been a powerful conversation, Jamie. I know that you have an erotic activation course online, and I want you to let our audience know how people can find you online. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that that enrollment for that course will begin around Valentine's Day, and it's a wonderful way that couple can dive into some of these areas and exploring their intimacy, eroticism, and desire together. And my website is jamiethompsoncoaching.com, J-A-M-I-E, thompsoncoaching.com. And I also post live videos on Facebook and, and my, my Facebook ends up being a source of, of content for people. So you can also look for me on Facebook. The link is here as well as the link to my website. And if you have interest in either a, a strategy session to just see what's going on in your relationship and if there's any way that I, you feel like I might be able to support you with that, then send me a message and we can hop on a call and, and just talk about what's going on. And right. then if, if you have interest in the erotic activation online program, send me a message about that as well. Great. Well, so we'll have all those links in the show notes, but basically jamiethompsoncoaching.com. It's J-A-M-I-E-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N coaching.com, um, facebook.com forward slash Miss Jamie Thompson, M-I-S-S Jamie Thompson. And again, we'll put all those links in the show notes and let you know how to get in touch with Jamie. Jamie, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for bringing your energy and, and brilliance and love to the call today. You're welcome. It was so much fun. Great. Okay, cool. My pleasure. Well, Ignite Intimacy Community. You heard it here. Jamie Thompson and I jamming on all sorts of juicy topics. Definitely check her out and trust you're blessed. Happy New Year, everyone. And stay tuned for the next hot, juicy episode. Check us out on iTunes. Leave us a rating and review. And if you have any questions, comments, please email us hello at igniteintimacy. Dot com and stay blessed. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now. And remember, we have a giveaway happening. So make sure to keep an eye on our Ignite Intimacy Instagram page. Follow us at Ignite Intimacy and look out for the picture of the Desirables Female Explorer and Massage Stones for more information on how to win your special package. Thanks for tuning in to another conversation on the Ignite Intimacy podcast hotline. We love that you choose to spend your time with us. Check us out at igniteintimacy.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and leave us a review and a rating. It helps more people know about us. We love to hear from you. You can email us with questions, comments, or suggestions to hello at igniteintimacy.com. Dot com. And tell your friends. Music was arranged by Jason Pfaff and Mike Corey. And this podcast is produced by yours truly, Laura Aisha. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, let your light shine bright and ignite your intimacy. Intimacy.